Right, so Greg, this is, this is the front of the vehicle, which I always like to divide the vehicle. You know, we've gone the engine, we'll talk a bit more about the exterior of the vehicle. But the front section is where you spend probably most of your time, uh, you know, sitting in the front here. And I think to get it right, to actually have it so you can use the space well, it's not too noisy. I mean, these vehicles are a little bit quieter than the 70 series. You find that there's a bit more insulation. So, you know, we've started, we've, we'd normally take the carpets up and put a, a sound deadening if uh, the car needed it. And especially in the 70 series pickups, with these we've put what's called a tuckler floor mat. It's an insulative mat, which is quite nice because you can dirty it, wash it, clean it, and it provides a good level of sound insulation. Now, something you don't realize is when you're driving, sound can be very uh, tiring. You know, you're, you're driving along and, and you find that you lose energy, you lose concentration because you've got a drone or a lot of noise. So you're trying to cut out some of that residual noise. It doesn't help to just turn the radio. <laughs> so equally, a sound system is something to consider. It doesn't have to be top end. And these days we're getting, this is not a fancy sound system, but you get some really great sound systems. They're more Android based. Uh, I'm no specialist on sound systems, but I do actually choose with the clients we, we research and find a really nice, like some really good systems out there that intera interface a lot of the apps that we use, like Tracks for Africa and some of the mapping is all on the system. Mapping is always important, but too much mapping and, and too much information I think also becomes an overload. There's that very fine balance. You know, I'm sort of old school in one sense, I really like paper maps. I've got very fond memories of traveling up into Africa with a big Michelin map and you know you'd pass an overlander you'd flash your lights you'd both pull over you'd come back to and you'd sit and have a cup of tea and you'd have your map on the bonnet and you'd be talking you know and sharing experiences and getting as much information as you could and I liked that experience because it, again it wasn't just on an app which is really valuable you can't knock the information that's shared these days sometimes it's a bit you too much. You don't learn as much though just following GPS yeah, you don't learn as much. I mean, GPS has got a great value if you're going into sort of cities or you're looking for difficult campsites that you need to find or you're running or you're later, lost. you're lost. You know, don't take away the safety element and margin that something like a GPS offers. So you need a GPS. It's a safety tool as much as it can be use, useful. You know, and, and a, a navigator, sort of a, a navigator being able to talk you through some routes and give you some very basic information. The probably most valuable thing a GPS has in my books for safety is the fact that if you're lost you can give someone your coordinates mm. or you can put in coordinates and drive to somewhere. So that's important but this whole front area is, is important to make it comfortable and there are going to be certain things you're going to use so you're going to need to get water and you're going to need maybe travel flasks and your coffee and you need maps and that's what you need to work out. What are you going to keep in the glove box? It's really valuable space there. Don't go and keep the user manual in there. That's the last place you want to keep it. You know, Put something in there. Maybe it's a small bag with a mini first aid kit or some, some key things that you find you're using. You know, hand sanitizer, hand cream, sun cream. Uh, you, know, you, just, you just need to think. That's valuable space. Okay? Where are you going to put your phones? Lying your phones, I mean, even here we haven't got dedicated phone holders. That's another thing, USB charges is big business these days. Well, USBs all around the vehicle. I mean, we put USBs all around the vehicle. So if people are looking at um, reverse cameras, you know, you can either have it integrated into the radio or you can have it which works in place of the rear view mirror. This we can't look out the back, it's blocked. And, and then you need to power these items. Now here, this is what I want to show you. This is what I hate. Okay, this, this we haven't plumbed in because we don't know if the client wants it there or here or wherever. This little tire monitor, the cable must come up from behind the dash. There's nothing worse and more infuriating than having a cable that's floating around. Okay, so I try and get away from that. Even if it means I'm going to put a dash, a USB pod or a point on the dash, through the dash. This is your vehicle, customize it. Sometimes you want to put a GoPro camera on there. Try not to have cables going all over the place. Work out what you want from your USB plug points. And quite often it's a, it's a plug by USB up here. You could put cameras up here. It's on the dash for either a GPS or a tire monitoring you system. You like the center roof console? Yeah, they're good. Um, you've got to use it. It's like anything, you know, when you've got that space, this is dead space. 
okay so if you can use it people like to put two air radios up there they have a storage everything that you have in this area be it a little pocket on your sun visor a little list that you put underneath the sun visor which is always useful you know to it have got some little plastic inserts these Use visors that. look a, like they look a bit small compared to like a modern day buck you would have a much bigger uh, visor than that you know depending on your seats and the height how tall you are these are fine if you find that you you find that the, the top of the windscreen is just a little bit too high for you put a strip across put a sun strip you know put a take some black matte vinyl and just put a strip across the top of the windscreen if you find that that's going to help you do you like those coatings yeah. you get on the on the front of the on the windshield no, i think you know that we don't get them in south africa so when we people ask us to fit them we bring them in from australia the little peak yeah they're nice to use i mean they're not that popular here they look, quite um, cool. they look good yeah and they work you know, they do work you've got to fit them on and the, you know you need to get a proper one and so so dash dash covers yes protect the Does dash slide around on the Nama uh, roads yeah i mean these are these these generally come with some velcro now the the big gripe i have with velcro is velcro doesn't stick to any of this plastic really well especially when it gets hot so you know you'll find this dash cover and you'll stick your velcro if you're going to stick velcro onto any of these surfaces you really need to clean it properly and make sure you get rid of all the, the, the oil and residue so that your part of the velcro is going to stick and you'll end up changing it so carry some spare velcro because heat velcro doesn't like it you know in a sunscreen this is another thing when you're stopping and you're getting out your car to come back into the car in the heat it's really hot so if you could put sunscreen in the windscreen would you almost have a permanent blind there no i don't because okay. it's just it's another it's fixture you've got to make yeah. you know these foil screens and if you if you get a big enough one you can trim it to fit your windscreen nicely and actually make up some for the side windows yeah. you know make up make up one for each side window so that if you leave the car and you put these in the windows for one people can't see into the car so it's a deterrent more to privacy. a point more privacy and you're keeping the car much cooler so to prepare the car we would normally take these windows and we'll have smash and grab film put onto the inside of the window as a safety security feature along with a tint now I never tint the front windows very dark at all and my rule is you want to be able to sit in the car and wave at someone and they must see you how rude is it to drive through a village and the kids are waving and you waving like crazy but your windows up and they can't and, and see from you. From a legal perspective, I don't think you're allowed a, a dark tint on you're not. Well, on, in many countries, you're not even allowed a tint on the windows. So you must be careful because some countries you cannot have a tint. And that's another point in Zimbabwe, you need uh, specific markings for your car. And stuff so like that. a lot of the countries that you're going to go through will have certain regulations when you cross borders. You know, the reflective tape that you're talking about for Zimbabwe is white reflective tape on the front, uh, the honeycomb type of reflective tape two strips 100 mil long on the front bumpers and two red strips on the back and carry some spare with you you know so yes you need to know the legalities of going through each country so when i'm sitting when we're looking at how we set this up the comfort seat covers i mean these are old seat covers on here these are old i think these are old escape seat covers these are great seat covers they've been washed i don't know how many times you know a cotton canvas seat cover really does make it comfortable and it's easy to wash you sweat a lot in, in when you're driving you know and it gets hot so have something that you can pull off and wash you know? this is where you're going to be spending a lot of your day yeah absolutely so so when i'm sitting here the, the the other thing that you often want when you when you're in the vehicle is you want to access your camera gear and you'll see just now that we, we generally put a camera box between the seats here that you can lean back and get into when you leave the car I want to be able to lock that away so the camera box opens up I can drop my camera bag in there I can lock it I can leave the car without anything really saying please break in and steal me even GPS's and this car doesn't have a lock up safe in, in here but I like to put a steel either safe built in or a lockable area we've got a safe hidden in another place in this car but generally a lockable box in the front here with some one some hidden storage is great because you, you can cars get targeted? no not often no i would say i could probably count them less than one hand how many cars i know have been targeted you know it's an unusual car it's got a lot of kit on if you go and park your car 
carefully. So if I'm in a city and I want to park up somewhere, I'll, 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 probably, I'll probably won't end up parking in a street in a foreign city. I'll go and find a parking lot, find a guy, it might be a hotel, it might be a building, it might be a business, and I'll just say, look guys, do you mind parking my car? I'll pay you to look after it. I'm going to go into town with a taxi. I'm going to walk around. Then I don't have to worry about my vehicle. So you don't park in the middle of Nairobi and then go for drinks? Let's think about that. <laughs> I wouldn't do it in Johannesburg and go and have drinks. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, security is obviously an issue. Um, we can talk about that at some stage. But I just want to go back to, to the importance of getting this right. The seats are another very important part of when you're driving. Now, we all have different ailments and as people drive you find that you know if a seat doesn't support you properly your lower back or under your thighs when you sit in a seat here you need to make sure that your thigh is actually supported so if I'm sitting in here it doesn't help if my thigh is not supported underneath here so sometimes I'll even actually take a towel fold it up and just put it underneath it to support my leg because when I support my leg here I take the pressure off my lower back and actually you find when you get out of a car you're less tired because you've actually you're sitting comfortably so getting getting your seating position correct is really important and distance to the pedal is key. distance to the pedal um, comfort on the steering wheel so that you you're feeling comfortable you don't mean overextending your arms or well you shouldn't you know you can't control the vehicle yeah you know and you want to be nice and relaxed so that you can sit comfortably you can you can sit and enjoy your drive and you'll be able to relax while you're driving so you understand how important seating is and actually making sure that your seat is in good condition. You know, and nothing wrong with taking a small cushion or a towel just to make sure that you've got that lower lumbar support, support under your thighs. Um, you know, you can actually reach the pedals. Every and you've got nothing that's going to actually, you know, come underneath the pedal. A floor mat that slips forward and you can't get the clutch down properly or you can't brake properly.